Pokemon are known for showing off crazy skills in battle, but not many can match the martial arts prowess of a Lucario. The Lucario is a fighting and steel type Pokemon well known for its fondness of combat. Standing at an average height of 3 feet and 11 inches, Lucario are usually found training high atop mountains, honing their fighting skills on a daily basis. Compared to other Pokemon, Lucario are very well-rounded offensive fighters, with high attack, great speed, and moderate defensive stats. Even though they tend to keep away from people, Lucario are actually extremely loyal to close friends and family. Some are so devoted to trainers, they even figured out how to talk with their minds. Why did you abandon the queen? Telepathy. Wait, wouldn't it have to be a psychic type to do that? No, it just has to star in its own movie. <laughs> well, who wouldn't want to see a movie starring one of these guys? Lucario is awesome looking, especially those big spikes there. Perfect for a killer backhand. I suppose that may improve a Metal Claw attack, one of the many techniques in Lucario's intimidating arsenal. My favorite is Bone Rush. It doesn't just sound cool, it's when Lucario literally creates bone-shaped laser weapons out of thin air and then beats people down with them. Impressive, yes, though the wild Lucario's most powerful physical move is Close Combat, a full-out offensive blitz at the expense of defense. And Lucario can use Dragon Pulse, aka it can shoot a giant energy beam from its mouth. It's like he's throwing up lasers. While Lucario does have a variety of more useful moves, such as Heal Pulse, Sword Stance, and Extreme Speed, all of which many other Pokemon have as well. However, Lucario does possess a unique trait, the ability to sense and manipulate Aura. Aura is a spiritual energy described as the essence of every living thing. A Lucario can harness its own Aura to create brand new attacks. Like Aura Sphere, a projectile so powerful it can destroy stone bridges. But Aura has many other uses. By sensing the aura of those nearby, Lucario can predict incoming attacks, find hidden people, or even examine environments in a literal out-of-body experience. I guess it's sort of like Key from Dragon Ball. Actually, this karate dog is really starting to remind me of someone. Mm. Lucario's power is something to behold. A single aura sphere can even overcome attacks from legendary Pokemon. Physically, Lucario is strong enough to mangle the steel claws of a crane with a single smack. Talk about metal! Even more, it can move in short bursts of speed so fast it disappears. I should note that the fastest speed a human eye can perceive is approximately 9,000 miles per hour. And to top it off, Lucario can take a bunch of really bad blows back to back and still stand up. It can survive falling dozens of feet or explosions powerful enough to obliterate whole rooftops. Hey. That's how I remodel, too. A typical Lucario can even survive some brutal beatings from fire-type Pokemon like Blaziken and Magmar. This is impressive for two reasons. One, Magmar's body temperature measures a ridiculous 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Jesus, it's like Smokey the Bear's worst nightmare. All this guy needs to do is touch a tree and that whole forest is gone. But not Lucario, no sir, its fur isn't even singed. Made even more impressive by my second reason. Lucario is weak to fire-type Pokemon. Well, Lucario is also weak to fighting types, and it is a fighting type, so... Does that mean it hurts itself? Uh, in a way, but nothing like that. Lucario aren't endurance fighters, and yet often employ hyper-aggressive techniques, so they frequently overtax themselves in combat and even become confused when tracking too many auras. This Pokemon rarely backs down from a good fight, even when up against overwhelming odds. But that's what makes this Kung Fu puppy so friggin' badass. With an imposing arsenal and the fighting spirit to match, the Lucario are certainly frightening warriors. Why'd you do that? You snuck up behind me. That is always a mistake. Standing six foot one and weighing 220 pounds, TJ Combo is the definition of a champion. But he didn't start out that way. Born to a poor family on the Texas coast, Tyler Johnson Garrett was in for a rough road to fame and glory. TJ didn't have much, but he did have boxing. TJ's dad trained him to box, and he joined a junior league when he was 12 years old, where he promptly lost. But instead of learning from his mistakes and trying again the next year, 
TJ replaced the padding in his glove with a roll of quarters and got his revenge with one savage blow. If he learned anything that day, it was only how good it felt to win. Well, the Junior League didn't exactly agree, so they kicked him out. For the rest of his childhood, he was in and out of trouble. But unwilling to give up, TJ eventually took what little he owned to start a new life at a boxing gym in Chicago. As a janitor. Hey, you gotta start somewhere. Yo, check this out! TJ's love for boxing never died. Every dollar he earned was spent on boxing lessons. Every spare minute studying legends like Mike Tyson and Muhammad Ali. You could say he was really cleaning it up in the ring, until he finally got a shot at the heavyweight championship. Like his hero Ali, TJ fights using an outboxer style, staying outside an opponent's reach with evasive maneuvers and taking advantage of missed swings. And TJ's go-to attack is his mighty power line. Wait a minute, isn't that the band from a Goofy movie? No. Oh, it's a straight punch that knocks even the toughest opponent backward. His tremor punch is a flying overhand attack that can hit the ground so hard, it creates a shockwave that knocks people off their feet. And he can even send them skyward with his vortex uppercut. But his fighting style goes beyond mere punches. His flying knee is good for aggressively closing in on opponents, and his shoot toss sets them up for his famous combos. That's where he got the nickname, TJ Combo. Is that how you got your nickname, Boomstick? Nickname? What the hell are you talking about? Oh, never mind. Through years of hard work and dedication, TJ eventually won the heavyweight championship. At last, fame, fortune, and glory were in his hands. And then they all went to his head. TJ got lazy, blowing his prize money on parties. Good for him. And ignoring his training until he lost the title. Ah, shoot. Man, this poor guy just can't keep it together, Kenny. That's when the world-dominating megacorporation Ultratech, aka Evil Walmart, offered TJ an experimental surgical procedure to put him back on top. And TJ remembered the lesson he learned long ago. If all else fails, just cheat shamelessly. Ultratech fused titanium implants into TJ's arms, drastically increasing his striking power. Within six months, TJ won his title back and held it for 20 years. But Ultratech wanted a favor in return. They waited 20 whole years to cash in the favor? Nobody's that patient. Ultratech had a new product, a robot warrior they wanted to showcase in a battle against the boxing champ. They left TJ with one word of instruction. Lose. But TJ smashed it to pieces in front of a live audience because screw perfectly legal long-term business contracts. In response, Ultratech exposed TJ for the cheater he was, and thus he was banned from boxing. Again. But this time, TJ refused to go out in disgrace. So he ripped the metal right out of his arms with his bare hands. <laughs> like a badass! Or a complete idiot. But by some extreme luck, Ultratech's experimentation left him with a minor healing factor, which ensured his arms weren't ruined forever. What's more, he also learned he could enter a berserker mode, which enables him to move and punch faster when in desperate situations. Well, robo-arms or not, TJ is one impressive fighter. His punches can launch heavy enemies like Fulgore over 13 feet into the air. And holding the championship for 20 years is way longer than the world record. Currently, the longest held heavyweight title belongs to Joe Lewis, whose reign lasted 11 years, 8 months, and 8 days. TJ defended his title for nearly twice that length. Plus, TJ's got plenty of experience outside the ring. Without implants, he's defeated the secret agent Orchid, the upgraded warbot Fulgore Mark II, and killed multiple Ultratech super dinosaurs. That's right, this is a boxer who kills freaking velociraptors on the regular. And he's obviously very resilient to pain, like when he survived jumping out of an Ultratech skyscraper. Based on the amount of time it takes other unfortunate visitors to fall from the top floor, this building must be 1,162 feet tall. But we all know this boxing champ never had a perfect record. He lost fights to Glacius the Ice Alien, and twice was outmatched by squads of Ultratech super soldiers. Also, while TJ's outboxer style is quick and resilient, it can be overwhelmed by an aggressive enough opponent. If he gets overconfident, he's sure to lose an important fight sooner rather than later. 
But since being outed, he's determined to prove his skill is all natural. It's gonna take a lot to bring down a champion like TJ Combo. And don't think for a moment that I'll let anything get in my way. Cause if you give me that moment, I win.